Hello and welcome to Pseudocode. I know this must be a long awaited video and I wanted to do it uh, properly so that it makes it easy for you guys to understand. So let's dig in. We are going to start today with consistent hashing. I hope that you guys have already watched the hashing video. If you haven't, I would strongly recommend to watch that first because it will help you build the foundations of hashing and then it will make it much more easier for you to start with consistent hashing video. So let's get started. <music> As you know, in previous video, when we were studying about hashing, uh, we calculate hashes for all the values that we want to save and there is an output range uh, of numbers for which the, those hashes are generated and then we map those numbers to different servers and hence we save the values in different servers. Right? We found that the problem occurs whenever we want to add a server or remove a server. When we have to do that, we have to remap the existing keys, right? And consistent hashing solves that problem. If you remember, I also gave you guys an exercise to find out maximum number of keys that have to be replaced or remapped whenever a server is added or removed. I hope you guys might have calculated that. If not yet, I'll add it in the description this time. So we have to solve the problem of uh, reducing the number of keys that have to be remapped whenever a server is added or removed from a cluster where we store all the key value pairs. So let's start. Look at this circle over here. We have 360 uh, different angles on that circle, right? What we try to do in consistent hashing is we try to put our hash generated values on a circle. We try to map those values on this circle. Right, as you can see, the circle is going to have 360 different angles. Right, we try to map those values as per these angles. Let's see how. Let's say that the hash output range that we have is 0 to 100. Okay, and the angles on the circle are 0 to 360. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to map the values generated from our hash functions to this different angles which will uh, represent our values on that circle okay so let's see we are still using the same hash function as we used in the previous video and these are the values generated what we are going to do is these values will be mapped to different angles on this circle as you can see here right how these are mapped is hidden into the implementation details but the basic concept that i want you guys to understand here is that the output values which uh, lie between a certain output range which is 0 to 100 are mapped or distributed over a circle right every value will be mapped to a certain angle and then that value will be represented on that circle so the output range can be represented uh, on this whole circle itself this is the basic concept of putting the hash values of the input data on circle right up till here this is fine but now how are we going to map which server this value sits on or which server this particular key and its value goes to right because we are still discussing that how do we map the values to different servers right in the previous implementation of simple hashing we had different values sitting on different servers right now here the basic concept or the basic premise of consistent hashing is that you represent hash values which are these numbers and the servers itself which are these values on same circle okay that means that for every key value pair that you want to save there will be a hash generated and for every server also there will be a hash generated which will lie in the same output range okay so let's say that the hash generated for these four values are 12 42 34 and 67 we will generate hash values for uh, the servers also using the servers ip or the server names and those values are also going to lie between the range range of 0 to 100 and when they lie in the range of 0 to 100 and we map them on different uh, angles of the circle this is how it will look the values as you can see are lying on the circle right the servers are also lying on the circle, okay? Just like these names have different hash values, 12, 42, 34, 67, these servers also have some values, let's say uh, 25 or 64 or 75 in this range, right? These values are also going to sit on the circle, 
okay now what we have done we have mapped the values on circle using the hash uh, output and we have also mapped the servers on the circle right so half of our work is done we have met the premise that the servers and the input values all share the same output range right please remember this is the basic concept the server the server's hash and the data's hash share the same output range and are represented on the same circle okay now comes the important part which is mapping these values to servers how are we going to know that where will 12 sit where will 34 sit where will 67 sit and so on right how do we know which server we have to store the value on for that there are two implementations either you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise i'll show you what that means we can follow one convention right that every value if you want to find out on which server it has to be saved you have a convention like every value will sit on the next server that it finds in a clockwise direction it can be anti-clockwise also right let's say we are going to use clockwise here right so 42 is going to sit on s3 34 is going to sit on s2 67 is going to sit on s1 and if you look at 12 and you try to move clockwise s3 is the first server that 12 finds out so 12 also sits on s3 just so that it reinforces uh, uh with you guys i am trying to repeat it again for every value we try to find out the closest server in the clockwise direction so for 42 that is s3 for 34 it is s2 for 67 it is s1 and for 12 it is s3 right so this way you map your values to servers and then again it becomes the same thing that these different values sits on different servers right up until here it's fine so this is how in consistent hashing you map the key values to different servers right now comes the part where we were solving the actual problem the actual problem was that whenever we want to remove a server we have to remap a lot of keys so let's see what will happen if we remove a server from this uh, circle right okay so let's say s3 has been removed if you remove s3 this is how the circle is going to look like right now see what will happen 34 will still belong to s2 it it was belonging to s2 here as well okay 67 will still belong to s1 it was belonging to s1 here as well right and 42 and 12 now since we have removed s3 now 42 and 12 both are going to belong to s2 itself right so we can see that out of these four keys 67 34 12 and 42 we didn't have to touch 67 and 34 at all only 12 and 42 got changed right so 50 percent of the keys have to be remapped if you remember our previous example where we were not using consistent hashing you saw that almost 100 percent of the keys got remapped right so here the movement of keys becomes less less number of keys have to be remapped why because only few keys which were sitting between s1 and s3 and now since s3 is not there have to be remapped to s2 right but can you think about what is the problem with this approach i'll put a 10 second timer for you guys to think about it the problem with this approach is as you can see when we have removed s3 you can see all the keys between s1 and s3 came to s2 right s2 earlier only had 34 and now s2 has 42 and 12 as well that means that s2 can get overloaded right imagine that there would have been many more keys here between s1 and s3 and once s3 is removed all those keys come to s2 that means s2 is going to have a lot of load right so then the distribution of keys is going to become uneven s1 has less keys but s2 because of s3's removal has more keys in it right how do we solve this problem we solve the problem of remapping less number of keys but because of that we encountered another problem that now the keys are not evenly distributed right so for that what can we do if you are thinking about replicating s1 s2 and s3 then you're moving in the right direction that's what we are going to do let's see here what we are going to do is we are going to create replicas of 
S1, S2 and S3. So as you can guys see here, I have uh, made uh, the naming convention as S1C, S2C, S2C, S1C, S3C, S3C and S1C. So if you note, for every server, there are two to three copies. So let's see for S1, one, two, three, three copies of S1. For S2 also, let's see one, two and three. Three copies for S2. And let's see for S3 as well. One, two. Okay, two copies for S3. So what we are going to do, we are going to have replicated servers. We will generate hash for them and then we will distribute those servers as well on this circle, right? Now let's see what happens. When we are going to map these keys, again we are going to map these keys to the next available server, right? Let's see how. So 12 is going to be mapped to S1C, 42 is going to map to S1C, 34 is on S1C and 67 is on S3C, okay? Now let's say we have to get rid of S3, okay? Let's see what happens. After we got rid of S3, we have removed all the replicas of S3 as well, right? Now let's see what happens to these keys. 42 goes to S1C, 34 goes to S1C, 67 goes to S1 and 12 goes to S1C. Now let's see how many keys are have been replaced. If you look here, 12 was at S1C, 42 was at S1C, 34 was at S1C and 67 was at S3C. Now moving on, 12 is still at S1C, 42 is still at S1C, 34 is still at S1C and 67 from S3C it have, has to move to now S1. So as you can see now, only one key had to be remapped. So it must be very clear from this example that when we were not using replicated copies, we had to remap 50% of the keys. But when we are using different replicas, we have to remap only 25% of the keys. Again, there is an exercise for you. Try to have more number of servers. Let's say instead of three servers, try to have four servers. Instead of two copies, try to have four copies and increase the number of keys. Like instead of having four keys, maybe have 10 keys and then do this exercise by yourself. Try to remove a server and see how many keys have to be remapped. Try to add a server and see how many keys have to be remapped. Try to do this whole exercise with different replicas and try to do the same exercise without any replicas, just like with single nodes. And you will find out like as a proof that when you have no replicas, you have to remap more keys. But when you have replicas, you have to remap less number of keys. That's all about consistent hashing. That's it. We have reduced the number of keys that have to be remapped we have also reduced the uneven distribution of keys. Now the distribution is even and you again end up removing or remapping very very less number of keys as we saw here, right? I have tried to make this video as simple as possible and as plain as possible so that you guys get the hang of what consistent hashing is but the work doesn't stop here. What you have to do is I'm going to link an implementation in the description just after understanding this algorithm Try to implement it on your own. If you cannot, go through the link that I am uh, going to attach in the description and then read that code and then without looking at it, try to implement it on your own. See if you can make any improvements. See if you can still fi find out any loopholes. Try to see how that code performs, what is the complexity. And then there is one more link that uh, explains how consistent hashing is used in different uh, caching solutions. Try to read upon that as well so that you will not, not only understand the implementation implementation of consistent hashing but you will also understand how it is applied on large solutions like redis or memcache and how it is so effective so that was all about consistent hashing i hope it will help you to understand the concept i hope it will help you to build your uh, understanding of this topic very well uh, apart from that uh, i just wanted a feedback from you guys up, uh, up until now, we had been using whiteboard for explanations and for teaching. And I have started with this uh, kind of screen recording and iPad for just one or two videos. Let me know in comments if this looks better for you or was it better when we were using whiteboard. Depending on what uh, the majority uh, votes for, we will try to switch the uh, method or we will just try to go ahead with the iPad teaching itself. Check out description, try to implement and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.